Hello everyone. This is Dr. Muhammad Imran. In the subject World Englishes, today we'll discuss categorizing World Englishes. The term World Englishes refer to the plurality of English language. So it means we don't have a single English today. But there are so many varieties of English language. That's why we call it World Englishes, not World Englishes. English. So different scholars and different applied linguists categorize these varieties differently. Okay, but they are almost the same. Only approaches are different. In this lecture, we will discuss how these scholars or how these applied linguists categorize world Englishes and how they have given different models for the world. Englishes. Let's begin and learn our today's lecture. Categorizing World Englishes. A range of different labels has come to refer to Englishes around the world. So there are different labels and they refer to Englishes around the world, right? Because we don't have a single English. So the following three terms however have more precise implications okay the first one is some scholars use new varieties of english or they also call it indigenized or extra territorial uh, varieties of english so this is the first term some scholars some applied linguist Okay, they refer to world Englishes or they put label what uh, uh, as new varieties of English. Okay, new varieties of English language, or they also call it indigenized or extra territorial varieties of English. This is the first label, and the second. That is the most precise and most common, which I did not write here. Okay, but let me tell you orally. That is uh, world Englishes. Okay, some uh, applied linguist or some linguist, some scholars, they label uh, this variety as world Englishes. And the third one, that is post-colonial Englishes. So we have. New Englishes, we have World Englishes, and we have post colonial Englishes. We will discuss these three one by one. Now, World Englishes. World Englishes is the most encompassing of all. Uh, how can we say the encompassing? Because it, it, it includes all varieties all varieties of English, whether they are spoken inside a native country or outside of a native country. Fine. Denoting all or any of the varieties spoken around the world. Like for example, there are so many varieties of English language which are spoken inside Great Britain. Right? And there are so many varieties of English which are spoken outside of Great Britain. So the varieties which are spoken inside Great Britain or the varieties which are spoken outside of Great Britain, all of them are referred to World Englishes. So that's why we say that World Englishes encompassing all. Fine. See here. Varieties spoken around the world, including British English and, of course, forms such as Nigerian, Malaysian or New Zealand English. So, if that is the variety of English spoken in New Zealand, New Zealand English or Malaysian English or Nigerian English or the varieties of English spoken inside Great Britain. So, all of them uh, we can say all of them refer to world Englishes or they are labeled as world Englishes. Now, the second one, new Englishes. Coined by 
played Weber and Ho 1984 is explicitly restricted to the newly grown second language variety especially of Africa and Asia like Tanzanians or Indian English. So here in the new Englishes they exclude the varieties which are spoken inside Great Britain. Fine. Only those varieties of English which are spoken outside of Great Britain and particularly they adhere English is learned or English is acquired as a second language. So how can we differentiate between New English and World Englishes? World Englishes uh, include all varieties whether they are spoken inside native country or outside while new Englishes only include those varieties of English which are spoken outside of the territory of native countries and where English is spoken only as a second language. But here English as a second language and English as a native language in world Englishes and here in new Englishes English is only as a second language not a native language. Fine. So new Englishes refer are to varieties of English language that have emerged and evolved in region where English is not the native language. If you are speaking English in Pakistan, in India, in Nigeria, right, or in Bangladesh, or in some African countries, so that is not the native language of these countries. Fine. So uh, these are where English is not the native language but has being adopted as a second language. So in Pakistan English is adopted as a second language, in India as a second language, in Bangladesh as a second language, okay? And uh, like uh, in Nigeria is a second language, in Singapore is a second language, not as a native language. So this refers to new Englishes, not world Englishes. Fine. So these varieties of English often develop unique features of in vocabulary <clears throat> because in this country English is spoken as a second language. So they adopt unique features of vocabulary. <clears throat> Localized terms are used in English and pronunciation, there will be local touch of pronunciation, grammar and usage influenced by the linguistic cultures and social context of the region where they are spoken. So, if English is spoken in Pakistan as a second language, so it will be influenced by the native languages of the people of Urdu language, Punjabi language, Sindhi language, Pashto language. If it is spoken in India, so it will be influenced by the culture of Indian, the culture of Bangladesh. So, there will be a local touch in pronunciation and grammar and usage. Right? Because English is not the native language of these countries. Let's talk about the third category. Post-colonial Englishes used predominantly in gender uh, unites all the variety which have sheer origin mostly in British colonization activities emphasizing this historical origins and the process which have resulted from it. So it includes so it excludes British English but includes American or Australian English, the new Englishes and the English related Creole. Now in post colonial Englishes we can say they have shared origin. How shared origin? Because those countries which were colonized by Great Britain in Pakistan, in India, in Bangladesh, in uh, some African states, Nigeria, okay, Malaysia or Singapore. So here English has the same origin or these Englishes they share some common feature. So they exclude what? Which English? Uh, British English but includes American on Australian uh, English because America was also a colony uh, of Great Britain in 18th century. Similarly that Australia was also a colony of Great Britain 
even though they, now uh, in these days uh, uh, English is spoken as a native language of America and Australia right they have native speakers but again we can say that America and Australia were also the colonies of Great Britain so in these all countries English had the same origin that's why only British is excluded here but all they are in. so there is what American English Australian English and the new Englishes Pakistan you see India Nigeria Bangladesh and America and Australia while if you talk about the new English so here uh, America is also included American English and Australian English is also because these are the native uh, countries of English language and here in the world Englishes whether you're native or you're non-native all varieties world English is encompasses all varieties new English in uh, only include those varieties which are spoken outside of the native countries and post-colonial only British is excluded while America Australia new English is all are included in this category so these are the three major category or we can categorize English uh, in these three levels. we can have three levels new Englishes world Englishes and post colonial Englishes now based on these three uh, categorize c categories of English language we have three models or three models are developed based on these categori categorization of English language three models of world Englishes first was introduced by Barbara strange model 1970 it includes English as a native language English as a second language and English as a foreign language and we have been gender 2003 spelling is wrong okay on the next slide we have correct spelling of gender and uh, then this is dynamic model and then we have Braj Kachru model 1992 and it, it consists of three uh, circles inner circle outer circle or expanding circle so we will discuss one by one these models in detail now first we talk about this strange model the spelling R is missing here strange model the first one categorizes countries in which English is spoken into three types English as a native language so this model it talks about or it categorizes countries in which English is spoken in three types so in some countries English is used as a native language for example in UK in America in Australia in New Zealand and in Canada so their English is spoken as a native language the second category in this strange model English as a second language for example in Pakistan in India in Nigeria in Bangladesh uh, in Malaysia and so on here English is spoken as a second language in these countries and English as a foreign language like for example in China in Japan right um, in Russia so in these countries English is spoken as a foreign language so this model it includes countries where English is spoken in different uh, levels fine native language second language and foreign language next we have Kachru model now concentric circle there are three circles of this model let's discuss in term of membership and definition they largely correlate with the earlier scheme with English as a native language and uh, appearing as the inner circle English as a second language being conceptualized as outer circle and English as a foreign language being the expanding circle so the terms okay this model is related with the strange model 
but it is a different one how it is different we'll discuss now so in strange model uh, he uses english as a native language kachru uses english in, uh, he uses inner circle of english strange use english as a second language kachru use outer circle of english strange use english as a foreign language and uh, uh kachru use expanding circle of english language so there is more going uh, on uh, than just uh, relabeling however english as a native language english as a second language english as a foreign language scheme may be conceptually clear cut but it is probably a bit dry and unappealing which one the strange model kachru's line of thinking aids a socio political and developmental component note that being in or out are in just neutral terms and spending implies a process of growth and a whole new agenda for a research and generating awareness of issues so kachru says english does not belong to any nation any country this why that instead of english as a second language if you are saying english as a second language it means that english belongs to someone and if you are saying that outer circle of english so you mean that english does not belong to someone we have only native speaker and we have only non native speaker of english fine but he is using outer circle and he is using expanding circle expanding mean that english is being Uh, uh english is growing in some countries it is being developed in some countries okay let's discuss more kachru and his followers challenge the implicit predominance of the inner circle because uh, a strange model says english belongs to great britain english belongs to america english belongs to australia english belongs to new zealand or english belongs to Canada but Kachru says no 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 not at all and emphasize the independence and practical importance of outer circle he says that english outer circle has also a practical uh you can say that a, a practical importance or he he does what he uh, uh he and he gave a kind of independent to english language in the form of outer circle outer circle and also expanding circle so they argue that english belongs to all those who use it so there is no need to slavishly strive for a british model of usage and pronunciation and view the uh, and view the outer circle countries as developing norm of their own so he say that it's not important that we have inner circle and we have to follow the pronunciation pattern of great britain or the grammatical structure of great britain or the accent of no it's not important in outer circle you have your own pronunciation you have your own grammatical structure you have your own localized vocabulary in english where where they are required so english does not belong to any nation but it is the language of all people wherever it is spoken so he talks about what the socio political and developmental component of english right english as an outer circle and english as an expanding circle not just as a foreign or second language now schender model the third model the dynamic model of world english was proposed by linguist edgars w shenders in his book post colonial english varieties around the world now shenders model emphasize the dynamic and evolving nature of english as a global language and particularly in post colonial context here are key features of the dynamic model so we will discuss some of the key feature of this dynamic model which is given by uh, shenders now stages of development in schender model now the dynamic models identifies three stages in the development in the development of world 
English is first. Foundation stage. English is introduced to a region through colonization, trade or other historical processes. For example, how English was introduced in Indian subcontinent that was through trade. Later on, India was made the colony of Great Britain. So here English is introduced in the first stage. What happens in the second stage? Now exonormative stabilization. English becomes established as a second language. In the second stage English uh, stabilize or English become the second, uh, it is used as a second language with adherence to norms established by native speakers and the norms which were established by the native speakers are also adopted by non-native ones like in Indian subcontinent. So during this stage English may serve <clears throat> as a prestigious or functional language in education, administrations and other domains as Great Britain they did in Indian subcontinent. They introduce in education where people learn English as a second language and administrative affairs in courts, in law and it was considered a prestigious language of Indian subcontinent that time. And at the third stage that is nativization, English develops uh, its own norms and linguistic features. Like today we have Indian English, we have Pakistani English. We have Singaporean English. So now, features influenced by the local languages, culture and context because we have our own culture. India has its own culture. Bangladesh has its own culture. So because of these different cultures and local touch, they adopt their own vocabulary, their own pronunciation. So this stage involves emergence of distinct variety of English and unique linguistic characteristic and it then transfer to a new variety of English. So in post-colonial English in the first stage it is introduced some historical process, trade or colonization. In the second stage it is used as a second language, as prestigious language. And third stage, it has its own unique vocabulary. And this process, uh, this stage is known as nativization. Okay. And then you see that most people consider it as a native language of the people. Right. Now, variation and diversity. The dynamic models acknowledges the wide range of linguistic variation observed in world Englishes including differences in pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar and discourse pattern. So there we have uh, variation in pronunciations, in vocabulary, in grammar and discourse pattern. English varieties may exhibit both regional and social, variety, social variation reflecting the diverse, the, 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 the diverse sociolinguistic context in which they are spoken right because English is spoken in Pakistani culture so we can see this variation in pronunciation so you can't say that you are mispronouncing a word because it is pronounced differently in Great Britain in America or in Australia no if you are pronouncing differently so this is one of the variation of English language that you're using in your own country nativization and localization nativization uh, refers to the process by which English varieties develop their own linguistic norms and identities in non-native context. In non-native context, it develops words, right? That is own linguistic norms. For example, in Pakistan, that is non-native context, but it has its own linguistic norms. So this, this involves the incorporations of features from local languages and cultures as well as the emergence of new linguistic norms and conventions. So there are so many vocabulary in English that we uh, uh, take from Urdu and we insert there. Okay, so there's, there's the local touched English language. And then we have localization referred to the Adaptation of English to local linguistic and cultural context. This may involve the creation of hybrid linguistic form, code switching and code mixing, as well as the development of specialized vocabulary and discourse pattern. So we nativize English, okay, first, and then we 
localized English. How it, it is nativized? Because it becomes nativized in non-native context. Our forefather they use and then transfer to us. And we are using here then uh, because there might be people, children in Pakistan and India that they might not know Hindi well, they might not know Urdu well than English. So then English become their native language in non-native context. This is nativization. And then there is a local touch, vocabulary, pronunciation and discourse pattern. Okay? It is taken, it is being borrowed from Urdu language, from Hindi language, from uh, Bengali language and then insert in English language. So contact and interference. The dynamic model recognizes the role of language, contact and interference in shaping the development of world Englishes. English varieties may borrow lexical items, grammatical structures and pronunciation features from local languages leading to linguistic conversions, convergence and diversions. So this because if you are acquiring English, so you have already in your hand uh, a language, Urdu language, Hindi language, Malaysian language, okay, or uh, Australian uh, or uh, Nigerian language. You have already in hand. So because of having already one language and you are acquiring English language, so they are in contact with each other. When they are in contact with each other, so you borrow some words from your own language and you insert in that language, in English language. So thank you so much. It was all about categorizing world English and we categorize world English and we talked about three labels, major labels and we talked about world Englishes and for world Englishes we have uh, a model which was developed by Kachru. Okay? And similarly we have another uh, for new Englishes we have a model uh, which was which is strange model and uh, uh, then we have dynamic model okay you can see here that is for post-colonial Englishes so for new for new Englishes we have strange model for world Englishes let me let me tell you here okay for new Englishes, we have strange model. Fine. For world Englishes, we have Kachru's model. And for post-colonial English, we have Shander model. So these are the three major models. Thank you so much. Please do provide your valuable comment in comment section.